Growing up in my house was chaos. It was just chaos. Um, Dad was mom's dealer. That's how they met. And I wouldn't recommend that as a basis for a relationship. Uh, they fell in love. They got pregnant with me. They got married soon afterwards. And we were a happy little family. Everything was hunky-dory. Uh, they raised me the best that they could. They really did. I've come to terms with that now in my 30s. It's, it was the best they could do. And I'm alive. Anyone who's ever had a baby or been responsible for a baby knows how much work it takes. How much time and attention you have to give toddlers as they grow up. Thanks, Mom and Dad. Thank you. I made it to here. I, I'm great. Uh, chaos is one way I would describe it. Chaos. So after that, um, growing up, juggled between mom and dad at different time periods, and there were always questions of money. You know, is it, are we going to get gas or are we going to get food this week? You know, those kinds of things. It was it was a stressful upbringing. Uh, how are we going to get through this kind of thing? Um, from there, I uh, first went to college, and I was first in my family to get a college degree eventually. But the first time I went to college, I was not a good student. I had not developed good study habits at all and dropped out. <laughs> so I was sitting there thinking like I got dealt a bad hand being born into this particular family full of chaos, right? And then I had an opportunity. I was on scholarship to go to that college and I threw it away. So not only did I feel like a loser by birth, but then I felt like I was a loser of my own, my own actions. I doomed myself kind of thing. And there were times of great depression in my life. Great, I've, I've talked about that in the past, the advice I would give someone with depression if they came to me. Um, I didn't like a lot about my life. And I felt like it was a lot of outside forces that were causing that. And writing down all those things I didn't like, a lot of those things I could fix. So I started fixing them. Started making life a little bit better. And for me, it worked out, slowly but surely. It, was, <laughs> it wasn't easy, it wasn't fast, but it's worked out. And there's still problems I have. There's still things I work through. Sometimes I come back to that family chaos and have to work through that. Sometimes <laughs> I mess things up like I did with that scholarship. But I learn from it, I move on, and I improve. And I try to not make those same mistakes. And I tell you these stories to express the difference between distress and eustress. I believe it's spelled E-U stress, so you, please look it up. Um, the difference being that distress is very bad for your system, and eustress is a little bit of healthy stress that you put on yourself. So distress would be a, um, a bad diagnosis at a doctor. You know, you go to the hospital and they tell you some really bad news, now you're in distress. Distress is getting in a car accident. You stress is deciding, I'm going to start a company. Well, I mean, that could be really difficult, right? There could be a lot of things you have to overcome and accomplish in that. And yeah, you're going to be stressed out figuring it out. But you've chosen it. It's stress that you've chosen. So there's a, a very big difference between distress and you stress. And the reactions your body has to these different um, pressures. On your life whether they're self-inflicted or externally inflicted upon you um, I tell you all these stories and I define distress and eustress to tell you that um, you want a boring life you you want a boring life okay when someone asks you what did you do yesterday well, I ate some food and went to work and then I went to bed <laughs> that's ideal that's what you want and you may not realize it you may not realize it because we've been sold this idea that adventure awaits and travel will help you discover yourself and you'll go on these little adventures or big adventures and you'll interact with thousands of people and everything will be crazy and exciting and yeah that's pretty cool and that kind of ties into what I'll talk about but your life 
is going to be incredibly boring compared to those stories. And that's a good thing. That's a good thing. Why? Because going on these adventures, you might encounter a lot of distress. You might get mugged. <laughs> Your plane might crash. Terrible things might happen that you didn't choose. And these things that you don't choose are often devastating, right? Like you get in that car accident, you don't have any emergency funds saved up in any way. You're, you're basically one or more days away from a really bad life due to distress. That's fair. That's life. I mean, life is very unfair. And these kinds of things happen to us all the time. Um, but having that boring life, you get to choose the challenges that you have. You get to choose the stress that's put on you. You wake up and eat and go to work and then go to bed and, oh, it's so boring. Yeah. But the, the pieces that you choose to fit into your life, that's where the excitement is. Like I said, the, the example of making a company or starting a family or moving across the country for some other opportunity, something like that. That's going to be really stressful. There's going to be a lot of challenges you have to overcome. But because you've chosen it, you'll give it your 110%. You'll wake up each day and face those challenges with a sense of, of courage and dignity and a capable mental capacity. Like you, yes, things will be daunting. Yes, it will be difficult. But having chose it, you rise to the challenge and you're excited to do it each, each and every day. Um, I would highly recommend you try to build a boring life. Build a boring life because then you can choose the adventures you go on. And that kind of ties into what I was saying with the whole travel and seeing the world and all the magical adventure things that movies sold us when we were kids, right? You could choose those and then they'll be very rewarding. But if distress is inflicted on you all the time, you're not going to have a boring life, but you might have a miserable life. Woof. <laughs> and that's a position we find ourselves in pretty regularly, right? Uh, a lot of the stuff I've been talking about recently is like cost of living is really high and things are really difficult in all manner, right? Whether it's relationships or money or whatever, things can be really hard. And we have our, our eyes set on these goals that are so extravagant, right? I'm going to have a bajillion dollars and, and get all set up. I'll be CEO of the next Amazon, like whatever it is, right? That's a very lofty goal. It could be great to pursue. But what I'm saying is maybe that goal is silly. And your goal should actually be a boring life. Because then from that boring life, you can sprout those fantastical other goals. <laughs> That's the way I've kind of organized things in my life. I want it to be very boring. Because <laughs> I come from not boring. I come from chaos. I don't want that anymore. I don't want every day it's just a question of if you're going to make it. Every day you don't know like who's angry, who's drunk, who's going to get punched, who's like... <sighs> no. I'm going to hone that down to a zero. All that chaotic energy. And I'm going to make my life really, really boring so that everything I choose to do is awesome and chosen struggle rather than struggle that's put on me. Where's the practicality in this? You know, like, well, how can you do that? I'm barely making rent each month, Luke. Like, oh, my life boring? <laughs> I'm super bored going to my job and still everything's pretty chaotic. Yeah, I... I get it. I don't necessarily have solutions for you at this time, but I do kind of understand the process on how to get there. And it sucks. There's no, there's no good solution right now. <laughs> um, like, how do you fix the cost of living? Oh, wow. You think I'm qualified to answer that question? I, uh, no. The only thing I can tell you is like, uh, make more money. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Helpful. Uh, I have this health issue that can't be solved. It's, it's a real bummer. And uh, what can you do for that to lower the stress of the health issue? Fix your diet? Exercise? Like, look at me. I'm not providing solutions. I'm not, I don't know solutions to these things. I just know 
raw frameworks, <laughs> raw ideas to kind of point you in that direction. Like you got to figure it out. It's your life. I mean, is it chaotic right now? Is it boring? I, I don't know. But I do know some little little basics that could help, right? Cost of living is crazy, right? Okay, so first you need to make a budget. However, incredibly frustrating, painful, or otherwise hope hopelessness inducing it is. When I started a budget, I would get frustrated and angry and start shaking, and uh, I would be a real bother to be around. My wife and I would sit down and log everything we spend, and uh, it took me a long time to be able to do that and actually enjoy it. It took me a long time to be able to do it and not be a big piece of poop to be around because it was not fun. Everything with money, I'd been raised like, oh, this is terrible to deal with. <sighs> Budgeting, what a chore. But I learned to enjoy it because I learned what it was doing for me. I logged every dollar that came in and every dollar that went out. And I was able to make a plan to eventually make more money and lower that cost of living. Those are two separate things, right? You got to control how you're spending every dollar. Wow, well, that's not always easy but you gotta do it. And you gotta control, like, how do you make more money? Well, I mean, there's the million dollar question, right? Pun intended. But you gotta figure that out for you. I don't know, go, go on job boards for your local area and see like, what is in demand? Go learn that thing. Go do that, okay? Like, you can do it. <laughs> you can do it, you can do it, okay? My brother and I are not the brightest bulbs in the bin, uh, <laughs> given by that terrible idiom that I just slaughtered, okay? But we've been able to figure it out, a little bit, a little bit. Some other people I grew up with, they had dirt floors in their home. I'm not exaggerating. We would go visit, they had no floors. It was a shack built on dirt. They're very successful people now. They figured it out. And that's just, you know, one thing. I know we're kind of focusing on money a little bit right there, but that's what you have to do for each aspect of your life to make it boring, right? It starts with a budget, and then you do, like, go full Dave Ramsey, right? Get an emergency fund and get out of debt. And, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a thousand little steps you got to do, or seven or whatever he has. And that's great. And that can work for you, and that can work for other people, and maybe your plan's a little different, sure. But the idea is that you're working towards making that boring life <laughs> where the car accident doesn't wipe you out, where the health disease doesn't wipe you out, where you get to choose the stressful thing in your life. Whatever that plan is that gets you there, it's worth doing. It's worth doing. If I could go back to 20 year old me and just sit with myself for like an hour, that's pretty much all I would say. It's worth it, it's worth it. It's worth sitting down and organizing these things and writing down the thing that's wrong and then brainstorming some idea to fix it. It's worth it. It, it really, 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 really is. And my wife asked me that the other day. It was a, a date thing. Uh, you know, you ask each other questions and she says, if you could tell yourself three words, go back in the past and tell yourself those three words, those were the three words I chose. It's worth it weird right I mean you could say anything you said, buy Amazon two words you know like what? <laughs> I could have said anything um, but that's what I would tell myself is like sit down organize yourself a little bit it doesn't fix everything right away there's still problems and the problems aren't fixed but you're a little more prepared you have a game plan. You have some idea of how to pivot your life away from this distress into a you stress kind of category. Like, how do I overcome these hurdles? Like I was saying, I can't solve it for you. But you can. You can. You really, 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 really can. I promise. <laughs> I promise. This thing in your dome right here is the most capable thing on the planet. We figured out all this stuff. Okay, from the very mundane, like this t-shirt, this was an idea in someone's head. 
and it came out and now I'm wearing it and they made I don't know like five to thirty dollars I don't know whatever the cost of a shirt is great <laughs> they figured out how shirts work and now I'm wearing one and it's awesome we have figured everything out up to this point. You can figure out how to make your life less stressful, less chaotic. And I hope you do. I hope you sit down and just think about it. Just think about it. Removing those stressors. Because it's worth it. Good luck making a boring life. Thanks for watching on this crazy disorganized rant. And I hope you're doing well, okay? Take care of yourself.